we call that theorem as a divergence theorem. And how this works is basically, uh, I think, let me just write here. I will, I will ex explain this very quickly and then we have, we will have some overview. And perhaps for your uh, final exam, uh, maybe this will not be emphasized, like not much. We are going to emphasize mostly the line integral, the green theorem, the Stokes surface integral. The divergence theorem, maybe, but I think maybe very small basis. So the important here is in green theorem, if you remember uh, what this goes, is basically we have a connection between line integral f dot with the, uh, the normal vector n, and we are integrating with respect to s. And basically, we can write this in terms of the double integrals with region, region d of the divergence of f. And f is a vector field. And then perhaps if, okay, if, uh, so this is line integral becomes um, the area or double, uh, double integral with area D. And if we have a surface integral, suppose that this is S, if this is F dot N DS, what will be the best way to describe this? So intuitively, we can see that we, when we have line integral, we have the double integral. But we have, when we have the surface integral, which is having a double integration, the connections, maybe, it will be a triple integration with E as the volume. Okay. And this will be divergence F of x, y. Now it becomes Z, three axis, and this will be dV. Okay. So S, S means that this is the boundary boundary surface of solid E. The E described in the volume, in the, in the solid shape. Okay. And uh, this equations, it will be true that we call this is basically the divergence theorem. And, and basically, the way we think on divergence theorem is similar to what we have in the green theorem. So in the green theorem, we have a line integral of f dot n, and then it will turns out to be the double integral of the divergence of f. And remember the divergence, the divergence of the factor field, the result is, is scalar, right? Scalar, uh, a value. And, and then when we have the surface integrals of f, f of factor field f, and it turns out to be, we connect that with the volume with, uh, in the triple integrations. So we can write maybe official definitions. If we have E, the solid region, and then S is the surface boundary of that E. Okay? So, so imagine E like a shape that has volume okay, in the three dimensions. And S is the surface of E, in this boundary surface. And then if, the, uh, by default, it's a positive orientations outward. Remember, positive orientations will be the counterclockwise. So when you have counterclockwise, uh, suppose that the counterclockwise in the XY plane. So the, the direction will be the Z, right? Because it, it could be, in the different case, Maybe the counterclockwise may be on the xz, xz plane. So you, you will use the right hand rule to, to give the which one direction that it will give you the, the normal, the normal vector. Okay. So the n directions can be traced back with the, your right hand rule. Okay. So uh, hopefully we can uh, visit some, some uh, examples or uh, review. Okay, and then, uh, uh, there are some uh, proof that this should be true. If we take the F and then take the divergence of F and we split 
the factor field becomes three different uh, regions. Okay, we split P, Q, R. But I think I will not prove this statement uh, in class uh, because I think we need um, at least to have a most, mostly overview. So I will maybe perhaps uh, giving you some um, some insights on how do we write the uh, the, the, the theorem in, in practice. So I will leave the proving in additional videos that I mentioned, but I haven't yet uh, uploaded. Uh, supposed to be uh, within this week, so I hope maybe tomorrow or um, maybe two, next two days. But that will be only the, the proving on uh, how the divergence theorem uh, can be proved. So perhaps we can uh, we could find uh, some example how to use the divergence theorem. So suppose that we have this. Um, I, I will leave this. This is supposed to be the proving. So I will uh, skip that for a while. If we have the uh, of, uh, finding the flux. So suppose that we have a factor field, and we have the sphere. So first is we could take the divergence of f. With, with with the factor field known as this, zi plus yj plus xk, and basically divergence is the dot product of the del, or the, uh, the gradient vectors, a dot with the uh, factor field, so plus partial, and then plus, see, if you maybe, remembering how to do the divergence to div and this will be equal to one okay and the units sphere is the boundary okay so s is um, the boundary of ball or let me write this is a sphere given by that equations. And then the flux by divergence theorem. You can write the surface integrals of f dot ds equal the triple integral, this is B, meaning the uh, the ball here. This will be the, uh, the, the divergence of F, dV. And we have the divergence F is 1. So we could write this is going to be uh, B or perhaps, uh, yeah, maybe just write B and one dv. So it means that if we take the, uh, the boundary in the volume of the ball, we get it. this will be the volume of the ball itself. Okay. Or the sphere, the volume of the ball is four over three pi cube, right? Uh, pi cube, one, sorry. The radius is one, okay. or pi over three pi. So meaning that this is going to be, this is the volume of sphere, which is four over three pi r cube. Okay. This is r or rho in the sphere. You so see we write rho, the radius for sphere in calculus. Okay, this is, I think, uh, very direct because we know the volume of the ball. Okay directly. But if the divergence f maybe have another number that we need to multiply with that. Okay. Since the result of the divergence of f is 1, so this is just the volume of the sphere. Okay. 
Okay, this is something that is, I think, geometrically uh, very simple. But if we have something like this, uh, let me put here to make it clear. So if we have another, uh, another situation that we might have something that need to be works, okay, then we need to work the triple integrations. Okay. Now I hope you can catch some of the materials or contents for triple integrals. Um, basically, in this part, the triple integration should be not that complicated, should be um, easier to follow. Okay, so uh, as usual, we need to evaluate the surface integral f dot ds. We need to connect this with the divergence theorem that says that this will be triple integral of the uh, let's say e because it's given here the bound the boundary and this will be the divergence f uh, dv. So the first thing we can do is we can take the divergence f. So taking the partial for each one of the axes and take the dot product. Okay. So xy plus. So result of the divergent, divergence f will be scalar, okay? It's not a vector. If you check the uh, the exercise, I think I put the exercise on the Moodle, but I think some of the part of the question I forgot to modify it, so I think it's a little bit difficult and challenging. One or two maybe I think a little bit difficult, but I think most of the questions should be okay, and that will be a typical examination questions. So I hope you can try. Maybe at the end of the course we can have some uh, examples and review on, on that. So this will be uh, y, this will be 2y, this will be uh, a 0, right? So we have 3y. Again, I think this is very simple and I hope uh, we can have a very simple uh, integrations here. And we can look at how the, uh, the volume goes from the picture and we can immediately see uh, the boundary. So in terms of x, y, z. So remember that in this case, okay, I think there are two ways to, to see, or several ways. Uh, they are already, I think the plane already being given here. So what we need to, to take is, we need to uh, to fix which one is the constant, which one is the endpoint. Okay. Remember, if you have double integral, the outside integral should be the endpoint, the constant. And then the inside integral should be a function in, in this case. But if you have triple integrals, we can relate the outside will be a point, a constant, and then the middle part will be the uh, function of one variable. The inside, the last part of the integration will be the function of two variables if you have this three. Okay. So we can look up here and maybe either if we take perhaps the x as our uh, constant, and then we could see that this can be a plane that will be projected to this. So that we can use that. Okay. We, can, we can use this as a function in, in our endpoint. So either uh, taking this y as our function of two variables. So we have now uh, the left part will be this function here. Will be so it could be understood as uh, this, and then this will be the z, or now is y. So I think I will write here. So I will write the x is the endpoints. So I will write the x is uh, from, uh, since we are having all the information here, so we could 
so when this is this is z z equal equal zero right this is z equal zero here this is z equal zero the plane here right that is z equal zero so when z is z is zero then x is plus minus one right so this one here and of course this will be symmetrical so this is negative one so that is uh, for confirmation so, so negative one and then until one right and then the second part because we decide that y will be the last integration, so we need to discuss about the z. So z, we can see that z is from this plane. Okay, so we can see that it will be zero. And then the upper part will be the one minus x squared, okay, as mentioning in the, in the system. And lastly, the function of two variables will be the uh, y and z. So y, y as a function, so this should be y as a function of uh, two variables x, z. So this will be y equals zero, because this is the plane of y equals zero, right? Okay. So that will be uh, taking this to 2 minus z. Okay. All right. Now, taking that into surface integrals, f dot ds, we have this is e, and then div f dv. So basically, the triple integrals works like, uh, remember, double integral is giving you the volume with the functions, like you have the surface function. Usually, if we write, let me just to, to give you some, some idea. So if you have a double integral, so suppose that we have the f here, and we have the a. This d is the projection, right? So we have that. We have a projections like like this, perhaps. Maybe this is the, the surface. Okay, that's the surface. This is the z equal f, and then it is projecting to the. Let's suppose that this is, we have the the area here. This is the right. So this is. This is already describing volume, right? But the triple integral, okay, suppose that this is usually we name is E. Perhaps we have functions, perhaps it's not. If we have a function here, suppose we have a function. This function cannot be described in the three dimensional space. It's basically, if we have triple integrations, this should be the four dimensions, which is not available in three dimensions. So, but we still can do some observations. So what should we draw? We draw this E. What is this E? This E is actually the same thing as this one. So you can think that this is going to this. And maybe this is a constant. And this will be the EV. Okay, that's how we understand. So basically, triple or double, if we have maybe the triple only that's DV like that, this is basically the same thing with this stuff. With this with, with the previous one I, I wrote. So it, it should be to help you to understand. Uh, and basically what we have here, this divergent is just a uh, because this is a scalar, so we use it to multiply this. Okay. So every time we have the triple integrations, if I know, uh, I think I list out the triple integrals, I think in your, in your class, some of your class. So the, this E is actually the volume. And whatever we have here, any function here, it's going to be described in the, 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 the three dimension. So whenever we have this, this is always can be can be uh, elaborated in the picture or figures. Okay. So 
back to here. So with all the information that we have here, we can plot and then um, adjust into the triple integrations. So first is, uh, this will be, let me just write here, the diff f is 3y. Let's just write that first. And I will just plug out the 3. And then start with the negative 1 to 1, 0, and 1 minus x squared. And then lastly is 0 to 2 minus c. So we have the y, the y, and then this will be z, and then the x. And I think we can do slowly from the inside. And then second one, and then the last one. So we can uh, directly see this will be um, negative one one zero. This will be half y squared. Plug in zero two minus c dz dx. So I will copy this. And then just solve this uh, usually as usual. So one by one from the inside and then the outer integrations. Right, and then yeah, dz dx. And then I think we can we can directly integrate this, or if you want to make the substitutions, we can make substitutions, taking two minus z as maybe u, and then the u will be negative dz. So we need to multiply with negative and then integrate that. Uh, so we have the u squared. If we integrate, we will have the cubes, right? So the cubes will be the uh, one over three. So, or, or let me write half goes here, and then we have one over three here. So negative two minus Z, this is Q, and then over three, okay. Okay, and then plug in the zero to one minus X squared. Or you can, Expand this to maybe two uh, minus two z. Oh, sorry, sorry, four. And then plus z squared. You, we can do this as well, but I, I think I will just skip that inside. So we have now we have we have cubes. And then plug in the one minus x squared into the equations. We will have. And I will cancel this three with that. So we will have half or negative half. Two minus one minus x squared. So it will be one, uh, one plus x squared. So one plus x squared with power of three. And if we plug in zero, two cubes is eight, right? Two cubes is eight. And then it will be minus minus uh, minus eight, right? And then lastly we have dx. And then I think we can break down this one of the one plus x squared cubes. So it will be. And then I will divide by two. I will directly maybe write the result here. I think also, since this is a uh, symmetry from the X here, so this is 
this is symmetrical, right? So we can write that this will be so due to symmetry in axi plane, right? So we can write two multiply with negative half. And then this will be from zero, sorry. And then this will be um, x to the power of six plus three x power of four plus three x squared, right? Three a a squared b a b squared, right? And then plus one minus eight minus seven dx. And integrate as usual. I think we can do this in calculators if you want to make it to make it quick. So it will be one by one. We have three over five. And I plug in zero to one. Okay, and then multiply with minus. We will have this. Will be, the result will be one eight four three five. I think up, up until this part, you can just plug into your calculator, I think, easier. So, so far, this divergent theorem, what we have worked in this example is for, we call the simple solid region. So this one here, let me just add some notes here. This is um, simple solid regions. But we can do this uh, divergent theorem also in the, we call in any, uh, finite unions okay so we can slice the boundary for example we have here the picture showing you we have uh, suppose we have the s1 and s2 the boundary so suppose we have uh, suppose suppose that e region uh, lies between closed curve or closed surface sorry not curve because it's s um, s1 and s2 where the um, s1 uh, lies inside the S2. And then the N1 and negative N1, or N1 and N2, uh, for each one of the surface, the N will be the, the normal factor for each points on each points in the surface, okay? So let N1 and N2 be the outward normals of S1 and S2. Then boundary surface um, of E is, we define this, is S will be S1 union S2. And the normal will be N, which is equal to negative N1 on S1.
and the n will be equal to n2 on s2. As we see from the picture, it gives some descriptions. So in divergence theorem, we apply that this divergence f uh, dv will be equal to, so I'll, I'll write the divergence first and then we, uh, we convert this to surface integrals. So f dot ds and this ds, we can, because this s is a vector, we can separate the factor for s using the normal f dot n ds. And then the s is described as um, two surface s1 and s2. So this will be s1 f dot, the n will be the negative n1, the s plus f dot n2 ds or in terms of the vectors so if we combine the normal this will be negative f dot ds this s is uh, the vector after we combine the normal but for the first one it will be negative because of the negative n1 plus surface integrals s2 f dot uh, ds okay, so basically we can uh, we can use the divergence theorem on any finite finite uh, uh, simple regions that we can uh, we can trace each of the surfaces so it's not always works on the simple uh, regions but also if we can uh, um, trace the separation between those two or maybe three it can be okay so that's the additional notes for what we call as the divergence theorem maybe some example i will continue some practice and example Okay, so basically we can also say the surface integral here is the flux. Okay, if you remember um, the definition of flux, and I think you learned that also in physics, right? <laughs> or no, <laughs> or just maybe forget. <laughs> yeah, but 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 I believe usually um, the surface integrals or the divergence theorem it works well on the uh, the electromagnetic fields, right? And you have the flow, we, we call the source and sink. I think I, I already explained that. If the directions goes inward, we call that the sink. If the directions out, go outside, we call the source okay. for the divergence point and the divergence point. And I think it's easy to follow. What will be the, like, the best way to describe the divergence? Uh, based on the words diverge 
it should be diverged into one point. That's why we can think that divergence should be a scalar field, it's not the vector. Okay, let me go and continue just a few examples on a few exercises on the divergence theorem. And as, as I mentioned um, in our final exam, perhaps I will emphasize more on the line integral, the Green theorem, Stokes, surface integrals. Maybe the divergence theorem, maybe from all the questions, maybe only one. And maybe not that I will not pick something that's too complicated. Because I believe, I think most of you are uh, not getting the informations completely, especially for triple integrations, which includes the spherical uh, coordinates and the cylindrical coordinates, which I suggest um, if you can add some additional notes, perhaps for your final preparations. Okay, let's see, um, let's start with something simple and then I will add more um, difficulties. So perhaps we can start to work on this number five to 17. Okay, we pick maybe, maybe we start either seven or maybe seven, maybe seven. It's still, still okay. And I hope if the question's only given this, um, this descriptions like you have the surface of solid, you have cylinder y squared plus z squared equal one, and then you have plane between x, x equal uh, negative one and two. Uh, I hope you can you can give some uh, some idea what will be the the the, um, the picture, and I think this will be the circle on the y squared plus z squared, and then this goes up and down with the boundary of negative one and two. Right? I think it's very simple. So I think no need to draw. So you could see that the y squared plus z squared. So if we so we start number seven, we have a circle, right? Or uh, since we have the f and we need to calculate this flux. So this is the questions. So we need to take this into the divergence theorem divergence f and then dv so the question is we need to find dv and we need to to um to set the endpoints for the volume right so we start from the divergence so take, taking this uh div f is partial partial x plus Oh, I, I did wrong. I did it number six. <laughs> Why I did that? Okay, it's supposed to be here. Okay. So let me write here. Div F is partial partial x three x y squared plus <coughs> plus So this will be three y squared plus zero plus three z squared. So this will be our div f. So there are two ways to solve this, okay, to, to, to solve the triple integrals. Um, the simplest way is to change to cylindrical coordinates, which I think I haven't told you more about that. So I will choose another alternatives, which is we take the, um, so suppose this is three y squared plus three z squared. Suppose that this will be dv and this is e. And we know that since we have the circle on this cylinder, which is y squared plus z squared equal one. So we know that the x should be a function of two variables, yz at least, right? And we take the x 
as the uh, boundary for our points. But since if we take this, then we need to, at least if we change this into simpler and taking this as D and then this one will be the X. So we could say that this will be uh, three Y squared plus three Z squared and this will be dx and then dA. So the x, the x will be So let me write here just to give you the picture. So Z, X, Y. So this will be uh, what will be? Suppose this is two, so this is negative one. So we have something like that. So radius is one for that. I think maybe let me just give you the this the cylindrical coordinates okay. so in a very quick overview. So cylindrical coordinates. we will have a coordinates of R, theta, and Z. So which means that we will have a circle here, which define the polar. But for every point in the polar, we will have some something that is on the height. So something like the cylinder here, we can define this point using the R, theta, Z. So basically, if the uh, the r theta is on the y z plane, then out the height, the height will be x. Okay. So this z here will be x. So x will x will act like x, just the same, but for y. And Z will be a polar conversion. Okay. And then we can describe that in the cylindrical uh, triple integrals. So this will be 3y squared. So 3 r squared cosine squared theta. And plus, I think we. We agree that this can be factorized like that, right? And then the interesting here is we have R. We need to multiply R as as usual in the polar. But the first we need to integrate with the X and then the R and then the theta. And then the X will be negative one to two, and then this will be the Polar. Okay. But basically, what I did previously, the same, the same. So what I did previously is, we take this is let's say this is d, this will be negative one two, um, this is y squared plus z squared, and then uh, all three, so three, right? And then this will be a dx and then da. Okay, so we can solve this first. So it will be three x, right? So it should be three x and then y squared plus z squared still, and then compute negative one to two. So we can put the two and one negative one here, which gives you the. Um, Six 
or maybe two plus one, right? Nine, right? So nine. And then the D is the polar, which is this one we already have. I think from the circle, we have radius one and zero one. And this will be the R, and this will be R, dr, d theta. Okay. So both will be resulting the same. So you could work out uh, taken into the three different coordinates, which is actually triple in the growth. This one is the high, and this one will be the polar conversion for the circle. As long as we can define which one is the circle. So the circle is on the yz. So the height will be the x. So the x will be the first one that we need to cover. Or you can evaluate the expression directly writing in terms of cylindrical coordinates. Still we need to multiply this r. So we transform uh, x, y to r theta. If you remember, this is something what we call the Jacobian uh, multiplication. This is Jacobian and we develop this first, the x first, and then the r and the But basically it's still I think the same. But I believe to make this maybe much more sense, maybe the second one. So we evaluate the the uh, outside of the polar, we get the result, and then we take into the polar and then we get that. And I believe the result should be okay. Uh, nothing really complicated right here. Just check the numbers using calculator and we get to be even I think because it's constant you can separate the R and theta and then multi multiply. Okay. we can have a break first, uh, continue, and perhaps, I think, uh, maybe one more, one more example here. I think for something like number 13, 14, uh, supposed to be uh, easy to be observed, and also from the picture, we can see the boundary, right? And I think from this part, you can see that we can choose this plane with this plane as our function of two variables, right? And the rest will be uh, the points, for example, we can say the x from here to here or from here to here. That we that will be the the, the end point. And then the, this x equal y squared, this will be um, the middle integrations. So based on this picture, so let, let me give you perhaps idea for, for this number 14. Uh, we can state the divergence f. We can evaluate this first. So I, I will write directly. So partial x of y, this will be equal to y plus, and take the dot product. And we have x cubed square of z, but we need to partial partial y. So we will have zero and the last one we have the uh, partial z for z squared will be 2z so we have y plus 2z right okay okay i think yeah, it's correct and now we are going to take this uh, the same questions this f dot the, uh, the S, <coughs> and then this will be, uh, let's say, E, divergence F, DB. So suppose that I will take this, uh, when Z is zero, when Z is zero, uh, the X is equal one. which means here, right? But when x equal one, y squared can be plus minus one, right? So y squared can be plus minus one. 
okay, from this expression. So we this is when z is zero, right? When z is zero, then y squared is plus minus one. So we know that this will be one and this will be negative one. Okay, I will choose the y as our um, endpoints. Okay. And then choosing the this plane here as our function of two variables. Okay. And I will write this because this is on z plane on the z, right? On the z. So I will write this as z equal one minus x. Okay. So I will take this. So first is negative one to one, that is for dy. And for dz, it's from zero to a one minus x. So one left is for x. So x will be, look at here. So x will be from, uh, the origin will be the y squared. If we look from the top, this will be the, the right side, and this will be the, the left side. So y squared until this is one, right? Okay, so this is the uh, y squared. So that's why we have y squared until one, okay? I hope you can see what, what this is. So this is z from zero to this point, and x from here to here, and y will be from this part here. Okay, and then uh, we can take all of this. So y plus 2z, this will be dz, dx, and then dy. Okay, all right, then we can take z for integrations and take it slowly I will change the color to make it easier this will be z y plus z squared and plug in 0 to 1 minus x and then we still need to compute the dx dy this will be um, 1 minus x y plus 1 minus x squared okay so I will write here uh, y minus x y plus 1 minus 2 x plus x squared And then taking this integration with respect to x, so we will have um, xy minus uh, x squared y over 2 plus x minus x squared plus x cubed over 3. So it's quite, quite complicated and risky. So I hope you can be very careful on this. <laughs> oh my God, okay. So taking, uh, taking one and y squared. So we need to complete this. So taking this y minus y over 2 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 right that's the first one we still have here and then take minus this will be y cube minus y 5 right plus y squared minus y power 4 plus y power of 5 cube and then still dy okay now be careful on this so cancel and 
we only have this y over 2 right so we have and I think we we have the already separate all the terms right so I think we can integrate let's just integrate it uh, I will integrate from the big one the big order so that will be y6 but it should be negative because of this so it's negative y power of 6 over 3 doing correctly uh, y squared oh it is y5 oh no, no, no. this is y6 y6 sorry sorry the rest is correct right let me let me let me describe this uh, y6 plus y5 Right, y5 over 2 plus y4 minus y cubed, right, minus y squared. Um, plus y over 2. Oh, this one. 1 over 3. Right, uh, plus of one over three. Okay, and then again, uh, I, I, I am really lazy <laughs> because this negative one. I think, in my experience, in my personal experience, when we integrate negative one to one, when we compute, sometimes we make some mistake in the mean in the in the process so i would like just to make it because it's symmetry right i will make it from zero to one okay. to avoid mistake and the other part will be zero right so zero one and then two and basically we can take this A and the Y. So this will be a negative Y seven twenty one, right? Plus it's twelve. And it's going crazy here. And I think you could just Put the number in your calculator. <laughs> okay, I will. I will try my best to prepare the exam so that the numbers will be not too much complicated. And then this will be multiplied by two, and plug in zero to one. Okay. <laughs> okay, I will just end up with it here. I think you can just compute this and then get the number. Okay. Okay. Okay, I will have an overview of, or, or of what we have so far. Okay, so I hope you can try the other number as well. Okay. So the summary is basically from the beginning of the line integrals, we can immediately see the comparison on the calculus. Okay. We have fundamental theorem calculus, which is pretty much similar to what we have in the line integration. So we have the, 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 the del f or the gradient f or potential function f with the particles dot the dr is actually the value of the f with the vector positions at some point b, which is b is here, and minus the initial point a. Okay. Very, if we compare it, very similar. And that's for the line integrals, the fundamental theorem. And then the grid theorem is stated that when we have this a counterclockwise, 
we, we call this as a positive, positive direction on, on the grid here. So what's happen if this is going clockwise? So we just add negative. Okay. So that's that's how it is. And this is for a P DX Q D1, but it can be also a half R, R D Z. Uh, we could develop a, a, a different uh, just be different um, formulations for the grid. But for for the for the uh, the stokes we have the curl, we have f dot dr, and we have a, a, and actually the relation between green and stokes is the green is actually the area on the stokes. Okay. You see how it goes here. It's actually on the stokes, but the stokes we have this shape that uh, on the surface we can immediately see that for every point. On the smooth surface, we are going to see that it has the normal direction, which is actually the normal direction for this dx here. So we can uh, separate this dx from f dot n and then dx. Dx is depends on the surface, and and that surface area. If you remember what we did in the calculus, that's the this the surface. Okay, and then. The last one is the the solids. We have the solids. We have the boundary. So it says that when we try to compute the the flux, the surface integrations, the vector field dot the ds, or the ds is based on the n and then the surface area of the the s, uh, is equal to the triple integrations of the divergence at uh, dv, which the e is actually this this whole volume, the solid volume of the uh, of the surface. Okay. So basically, as long as you can de define or describe the dv in terms of this e, uh, in which axis it will go, we can input all the boundaries here. Okay. So basically, it's either, but mostly it will ask you the flux. And then you will need to convert this into the uh, the divergence, and then basically taking the triple integration and solving the triple integrals means uh, sometimes maybe most of the time uh, you need to visualize the plane. If it is easier to be observed, then uh, perhaps you don't really need to draw. But sometimes, if you want to know like the previous example, we need to sometimes to draw which one is the function, how to put like what is the boundary, and we need to set up the, the triple integral, and then setting the endpoints, the functions, uh, one variable, two variable, and sometimes for curves that is having the polar. And we can convert to polar, so sometimes we can convert to polar to simply. So next part is I think overview for what we have. I think the questions that I put in the model, I forgot to to modify. So it should be so this number two, this B and C. Uh, it, this is the original question. So so I have modified this, but I forgot to replace the file. So. I will let you know what it is, but let me explain some of this uh, questions. I think for number one, uh, I hope it's, this is clear. So we uh, we have the factor field, and then we have to find the potential function f, which is defined as the the factor field is the del f. So this is simply taking the partials. So this is the partials, right? The partials for this f, and then basically we can say that we can partially integrate for each one of them with each axis. So for this one, we can partially with the x, the uh, the y, and the z, and then from all the compositions, we can look for uh, the functions itself and propose when we derive partially, they need to be equal with each other. So, for example, if we take this, supposed to be, let's say this one is the f, 
partial x, this one partial y, partial z, right? So suppose that the partial x, let me write here, z cosine xz. So if we integrate with respect to, uh, to, to x, so let's say we integrate here. So we integrate the cosine, right? We integrate the cosine because that is the x. So we have the sine. So we have the sine xz. And then we need to divide by z. So z cancel with each other okay? because of the change rule. Right? So we have sine xz uh, plus for three variables x, y, z, we will have a function reduce one factor, right? So if you have the two variables, this function should be one variable. So now we have two variables and it should be y, z, okay? So I think you can, you can sense if you are doing reverse, this should be true, right? Because the partial x, if we derive with x, then we treat the other y and z as a constant, right? Okay, so we should have, at least we propose that there might be a function of two variables y and z. Okay. Now, we can check the other part as well. For example, uh, we can partially uh, integrate the partial y. For example, we can take that as integration of z e with power of y z. So we integrate this e y z, and as you may see, that the z will cancel out, right? Z will cancel out. So we have um, e with power of y z, and plus, and let's say we define g one for the first one. This will be g two. Um, this will be uh, x z function of xz. And then similarly, we can uh, integrate the partial, uh, partial z. So I will, I will write the result directly. So this is partial z. We derive or we integrate with respect to z. So we will have sine, sine xz. And then we can cancel the x because of the chain rule for xz. And then this will be uh, also cancel y. So we have e, yz. And this will be g3, xy. Now, I think you could figure out from all these possibilities of our functions, which one is the most possible. I will choose to take the partial z and check when we try to partially derive. Because it seems that it's completed. For the first one, it's only sine. The second one is only d. But when we partial d, we have both of them. So I think this should suggest the more complete and maybe the closer one to what we expect in the potential functions. So if we take this and partially so suppose that this is the our f. So take this as our f, okay? And then we take this partial x. This will get z sine xz and this will be 0 and this will be uh, uh, supposed to be a function of one variable. So let's say this should be h. Let's say, um, or, or let me write, this will be g3x, which means the g3, but partially with x of xy. And then we say that this function here is equal to h3 of y. Okay. So we can say that since this is where is it here? They are only sign and or here. There is nothing, nothing besides this uh, results. So oh, this is not sign. Sorry, sorry. 
cosine. I forgot to derive. Okay. So then this will be a, a constant. It should be a constant. So then our potential functions will be f equal uh, sine sine xc plus e plus constant k. And then the second question, is evaluate the line integral where C is the curve defined by this factor positions with parameter T. And this is simply, we can take this uh, line integral and then combine with the, the fundamental line integral theorem, which is this is R B minus F R A. And we know that the a and b is based on the parameter t, so we can just plug in 0 and 1. Okay. Just plug in 0 and 1 to the r, we get the value, and then we can use that value to, uh, to this information. So we can take the f, so we know the f, let me write here. So f is sine xz plus e yz okay now suppose that we plug in all the information so we can take the um, let's say r0 we can start r0 so everything here will be will be 1 a 0 0 right 1 0 0 so r0 is 1 0 0 and then r1 is Cos, cosine pi is negative 1, um, ln 2, and then tangent inverse of 1 will be pi over 4. And then plug in all this. So f, 0, 0, 0, and f, negative 1, ln 2, pi over 4. And then this minus that, okay? And you will get the, the value, okay? So which means that we can just plug in the number or the coordinates to the f and you will get the results. I will give you the, I think the answer key later on, okay, after we finish. Number two, uh, this is similar to what implies in your quiz, I think, similar, but this is, I think, a little bit difficult. Number B and C, it's, I will change this question, so uh, just let, uh, wait for my answer key. This should be asking the, um, so it should be evaluate integrals that is on C1 and C2. And this will be the same, this negative sign x plus e, and plus, okay. And it, it's much more easier to compute this because this will be equal to green theorem so this will be taken the green theorem equaling to the d of the partial x of q minus partial y of b and then this will be da and d will be depends on what will be in uh, the in the region Okay, now uh, I think this number three also I think it could be described uh, 
very similar to the first one. So how to determine the conservative? We can state using the green theorem if you want. And we can say the, 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 um, this should be equal to this, right? So the P Y should be equal to Q X. That is for conservative. So using this, you can find, uh, so this is P, this is Q. So you could take that equations to make it equal. And then with the same uh, procedures, we can find the potential functions. So first, we equaling this two to get the K, this number. And then after we get K, then we get the whole equations. And then we can get the, the potential functions which is very similar uh, procedures with this. So we have F and then the third part is we have the line integral and C will be described as in the ellipse, uh, X squared uh, over nine. But uh, this is not important, okay? This is just a distraction, okay? This is not, not important because you have the point here, right? you have initial point A, this is B. So this is the same using the, minus F, R, A, okay. And basically you could just put the three, one and zero, zero to the potential functions, subtract and you get the value. Uh, number four. Number four is the green theorem. Again, using the statement here, taking this P, Q, and then you have the region described on the uh, parabola. So as long as you can, you can compute this parabola, the region, then you can take the double integral for D. Okay, D is described by this parabola. And yeah, I think either you can describe, uh, so you need to find the intersection between this point and I think intersection could be just zero one. And then the, um, the second one should be either function of X or function of Y. So I think it should be okay, right? Next is five, uh, compute that F dot dr. We have the, Factor field, we have the C, and C is the circle. Circle with the center three, ne negative four. Radius is two, right? So this is circle with radius two. And then, uh, basically this is also, I think this is also green theorem, so mostly green theorem, okay? I, I, I don't know why all this green theorem. So this is P, Q, take the, um, the green theorem, this is D, this is PY or QX minus PY DA. And since the D is the circle, so you don't even need to compute exactly for the double integrations. Okay. What it means is this is circle with radius 2. What is the area? 4 pi. So you just multiply for five. Okay. Right. So you just see this QX, QY, and then uh, I think the D can be explained using the this four pi. Because if you see the result, QX is just sine Y. So sine Y minus PY is one. This will be minus sine y, right? So it's canceled. And since this is clockwise, so this should be negative in the front. So a negative, negative one is just d, dA. So just a area of the circle. So equal four, five.
Okay, so, so no need to find the endpoints, which one is the endpoints, because we know that the, the area will be a circle with radius two. So just for fun. Okay. Um, evaluate the surface integrals. Okay, this is using the. Uh, so let, let, let's say that we have the surface Z. So if we, so for number six, so let's say Z is this, okay, based on the information, then we can take the partial X and partial Y. Uh, this is supposed to be X over, this will be Y, right? Okay, and then the ds the for the surface area, remember, we need to get into... So for surface integrals, there are two kinds, okay? Either you can directly use the surface area like this, okay? Or using the parametrizations which means that you need to, to count the, if you remember in our class, I think last weeks or last two weeks, we need to compute the cross product RU and RV and take the magnitude value. And this will be the, the result. So, so either uh, taking the, uh, this UV using the surface integrations and then we we can see that um, based on the this is the the r u cross r v magnitude value um, the let's say the u d v and we need to find u n v we need to find u n v based on the conditions so conditions is we can parameterize so parameterize S, okay, and S is surface Z, this is surface Z, right? And because this is, we, we can see that the Z squared is X squared plus Y squared. So X and Y can be related to be, so for example, if Z is U, then X will be U cosine, um, let's say V, and then Y is U sine V, so that they are connected, right? So we can write the R for these conditions, a U cosine V plus U sine V plus U for K. And then we take partial with respect to U, partial with respect to V, take the cross product, take magnitude value, and then that, that long, okay, that long. So I will just give you the alternative solutions uh, we can directly see that the ds could be taken as just the this um, surface area, and then basically the surface integral of this x squared plus y squared ds. We can take this. The s will be. Uh, where's my questions here? Because the z, we know z is from zero to one, so we know that at least. We can see that Z is a circle with radius 1, right? So we can write here, this will be x squared plus y squared less equal 1 for, for that Z. And this will be x squared plus y squared. And we can change the ds into our surface area. So take that, 1 plus partial x squared plus partial y squared, and then the a. And later, because we know this is circle, this dA later can be changed into polar. It is a full circle from radius 0 to 1. Okay? And then change to R, the R, the theta, and then you solve this, and then it change to polar. Okay. So we can, we can do that as well. So compared to uh, this part, this is also possible, the same result. But I think this take take time because you need to make the parameterizations and then take the cross product, take the management so long. So I think this one may be better. It's approach better. But it depends on the question. Okay. 
question, if you have the question that gives you directly the surface, then you can go this route there easier. But if giving you maybe some condition with vector positions and so on and so forth, then maybe you need to take this one. Okay, so either way, uh, it should be the same results, okay, same results. Okay, so that's, so then convert to polar, convert to polar. The last part, the last part is basically the Stokes theorem. Okay. So we have the curl, the curl F, and S is the hemisphere. So let me maybe explain this a little bit. Copy and paste. Let me erase this for a while. So we can, so we have F, so we can find the curl. Okay. So we can find the curl, and then basically, um, this is the hemisphere. So sphere with, this is radius is four, right? radius is four. And uh, we can, we can take the, the vector equation with polar conversion. And then uh, y is starting from zero. So if we take y equals zero, we have an x z, right? x squared plus z squared equals 16. So we have a circle with radius four, which means the x z is the plane that we, we are going to, so the Stokes will works like this. So suppose that this is y, this is z, this is x. So this, for example, this is just the intersection on the on the uh, on this plane here, right? And it says that it's oriented. The hemisphere is oriented on the positive y-axis, okay? Because it's positive here then it will be, so this will be the direction, okay. Using the right-hand rule. So this will be the directions. So we, we are having the counterclockwise. Just to make sure that the counterclockwise means we can use the Stokes theorem by default as positive, okay. So Stokes theorem in positive. And then we can uh, we can we can find the from this x and z we can try to parameterize what will be the best for the uh, for the parameter. So let's say parameter in t, we will have uh, from zero to two pi. Because it is counterclockwise, then let's say we are going to take this in terms of negative t, and then this will be k, okay, because it, it's, it's x and z. So we have, in terms of the quadrant, cosine in negative, it's still, we can say it's positive, but for sine, this will be negative, right? And then we can find the uh, f of RT. Basically, we state the um, the uh, zero and and two pi. Okay. State zero and two pi. And then take the Stokes theorem, which means that this will be the curl f dot ds equal line integral f dot dr. So the line integral becomes from zero to two pi from our parameter. And then this will be F of RT. This is R prime T dt. And then just simply work this out and you get the results, okay? I think that will be the end.